And so um, last month we talked about Glenwood and Windsor Pool. So this is our second uh, public engagement conversation. And so you all signed up because you have an interest in either Dodge Pool, Blackburn Spray Park, or one of the downtown fountains. Um, if you need to leave early, we totally understand. Um, you can find the presentation at columbusaquatics.org. Uh, we're also recording tonight. So the video will be available on, at YouTube, um, on Legged Architects website, and then also you can sign up and click on Aquatics Capital Improvement Plan updates to get email updates. And uh, Sana will put all of this in the chat for you. So you'll have those links that you can click on um, and save them for later. So you can check back in. Um, in case you miss anything, you can come back and watch the video or see the presentation. So just some housekeeping, um, some Zoom protocols here. Stay on mute if you're not talking. Um, use the chat feature to ask questions and provide feedback. We'll be looking at the chat throughout the, the um, evening. So if, if there's something that you want to talk about that we haven't gotten to, or if you have a question, just go ahead and put it in there and we'll make sure to get to it before we're done. Um, there's going to be some polls that pop up. And so all you need to do is click and click submit and we'll have a sample one here shortly. Um, and then when it's time for the breakout rooms, you'll automatically be placed in there. So you don't have to do anything except, except um, the, the little pop-ups that'll come up. So let's have our first poll. How many people are on this Zoom call with you? So it looks like one person is viewing by themselves and one has a full house of seven plus people. So that's how the polls will work. We'll have those pop up um, throughout the presentation tonight. Our short agenda this evening, um, we're gonna go through some of the current aquatics programming that Columbus offers. Uh, we'll introduce you to the process of this uh, capital improvement plan. Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we've learned so far, and then we'll go into our breakout rooms, and then we'll have um, time for some additional questions and answers at the end in the final thoughts. So here's the folks that have been working on this um, over the past few months and will continue to be working on this um, probably throughout the rest of the year. Um, we have a mix of architects, recreation and parks experts, and then the Columbus Recreation and Parks staff as well. So I'm sure you're all familiar with um, most of the facilities in Columbus, specifically the downtown ones, which is why you're here. Um, but you can see here through the map of Columbus uh, where the pools, fountains, and spray parks are located, as well as the one indoor facility in the Columbus Aquatic Center. And so tonight we're going to talk specifically about downtown. So we have the three fountains, um, we have Dodge Pool and Blackburn Spray Park. Um, Columbus's aquatic programs have been around for quite a while, um, and I think that. Um, we all understand that there's improvements needed to better serve the residents of the community. And so this is a long-term plan, think 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, um, in which some of those um, improvements are beginning to take place now, but it's gonna be incremental improvements um, over the coming years. And so um, phase one of this is what we're in right now. We're just gathering information and we're gonna hold additional public meetings, which maybe some of you know about, um, they're going to be um, one per week for the next five weeks to go over the rest of um, Columbus's facilities. And so um, one question we get is, why are we doing this? Um, and we understand the need to upgrade and expand aquatic facilities and programming, uh, but we really want to focus on health and wellness as we do that. Um, one of the main goals of the Columbus Recreation and Parks Department is to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we want to increase the access to parks and aquatic facilities, promote safety and security, and, um, and make sure that we're, we're looking at ways to have a sustainable uh, way to generate revenue throughout the year. And so the first step of the capital improvement plan is to get feedback from residents about uh, their needs and wants 
in each of the facilities. And so um, we've sort of broken it down uh, by part of town. So this week we're talking about downtown. Um, and keep, please feel free to come to the other meetings if there's other facilities that you use or that you're interested in uh, learning more about. Um, so we're in phase one, which is gather. So we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear what you have to say, what you like and what you don't like and what you'd like to see in the future. And then we're gonna come back to you later this summer um, with another round of community engagement meetings um, where we're gonna present some concepts for each of the sites. And we're gonna look for your feedback on that. And so the conversation doesn't end here. Um, it's an ongoing conversation um, and we, and we wanna hear everything that you have to say. And so we've already visited all of the sites. Um, we've reviewed operational budgets, program offerings, demographics, utilization, and that sort of thing. Um, and so now we're really in sort of the surveying phase um, where I'm hoping most of you have taken our survey. Um, it's been around for a little while, so we keep pushing it. Um, if you know someone who hasn't taken it, please let them know. Um, but we're gonna use all that information as we move into the next phases. So starting with Dodge Pool, um, you can see the average household size is under two. Uh, we have a service area of over 51,000 uh, population, and the median age is just over 35 years. Um, when we look at that age distribution, we like to kind of break it down because that can help us understand better what amenities to plan for. And so um, you can see there's a large population that's age less than three. So a lot of toddlers and babies, and then it kind of goes down as you get to um, high school age. Um, and you can see the breakdown on the other side here of the age of folks. And so the overwhelming majority are between uh, 18 and 49. For Blackburn Spray Park, same information. Uh, median age is quite a bit younger. Uh, average household size is still just about two. And the service area is a little bit larger at 66,000. And age distribution, again, helps us understand when we plan for amenities. And so you can see a, a, large, um, a large range, uh, pretty fairly even as you get up into the teenage years. And then once you get to high school, it drops off a bit. We have another poll for you. Um, how many times do you visit your pool or spray park on average per summer? Just another few seconds. Okay, so it looks like um, once a month and a few times a month. So not very regularly. The survey I mentioned earlier, um, we've taken some of the information out of there that we thought would be helpful to share. Um, and it helps us when we're planning for these future facilities and upgrades. Um, so one of the questions we were looking at was how far do you travel to use the aquatic facility you use most? And so that ranged from between five to about 20 minutes, um, maybe leaning more towards the 15 minute mark. And we asked what kind of pool user you are. And so um, overwhelmingly it's for recreational swim and for fun. Um, the, other higher, the other highest uh, categories were children's use of recreation or fun, swim lessons and lap swimming um, with water aerobics coming in there as well. Uh, one of the questions we asked was, uh, what are the three most significant community um, the community uh, positive aspects of public swimming and aquatics. And so um, swim lessons, year round exercise and a place to cool off during the summer were clearly the, the uh, hot answers there. And so we asked how supportive you would be of each of the facilities or services that the city may consider uh, when they're improving facilities. And so, 
Increasing the swim season had a lot of popularity, along with upgrading the pool houses and bath houses. Um, adding lockers, or I'm sorry, adding family friendly play features um, was also a high ranking one. And then uh, warm water for showers and lockers to store personal items. So um, just a variety of different choices there. And you can see that some ranked much higher than others and a lot were quite in the middle. So we had an open-ended question about what amenities you would use at a site. And so you can see here showers, hot tubs, splash pads, snack bar, uh, lap lanes, lap swimming, lazy river. So these were kind of all over the place. Uh, but we like to see the larger the font here, um, the more often it was it was stated. So you could see there's a few that really start to stand out. So I'm going to walk you through a few different amenities and programs that the city's considering offering um, at these sites. Uh, and they fall into four categories. So they're adventure, sport, fitness, and then programming. But first, um, I'd like to know what programming the city offers do you currently use? So we're gonna have a poll. So we have options of swim team or stroke clinic, dive clinic, swimming lessons, water aerobics, therapeutic water fitness, open lap swim, recreational open swim, master's swim, rental capabilities and lifeguarding. You may need to scroll down to see all of them. You can pick three. Okay. So we had uh, two people selected open lap swim and two selected recreational open swim, um, and then master swim and then lifeguarding or water safety instructor classes came next. Some of the sporting trends that, that uh, the city's considering offering um, include water volleyball, water handball, water basketball. And then on the bottom left, you'll see Wibbits, which is an inflatable uh, sort of obstacle course that can be moved um, from place to place, offered on different sites on different days. Uh, there's fitness trends, uh, some of which the city currently offers like water aerobics, and some of the facilities also have a separate lap pool. Um, but some additional ones that are being considered are aqua cycling or aqua yoga balance program. There's also general health and wellness or fitness classes, um, more fun things like dive in movies or log rolling. And on the spray park side of things, um, there's a lot of different amenities that can be offered in a, in a spray park. Um, and so there's inclusive play and universal design features. Um, and so that would be um, accessible design uh, for kids and for adults that um, have some disabilities. Uh, they can offer play structures, which is similar to a playground, uh, but just incorporates water. There's dumping buckets, um, which you can control or are set on a timer um, that fill with water and then dump. Um, we can incorporate some natural elements into the site. Here you can see the rocks are part of the spray feature. Um, other amenities at spray parks would be spray funnels. Um, these, can be, these can be sort of directionally aimed uh, for sort of like a water cannon fight. There's inward spray features uh, that create a tunnel. There's ground spray, similar to the, the downtown fountain. Um, there's rain shower features, which also incorporate some natural elements. Um, and then finally, there's different versions of shaded structures uh, to provide some shade to the site. They can shade 
the uh, actual spray park area or they could shade the adjacent areas uh, for family who may be observing. Um, and then part of that observation includes seating areas. And so there can be some natural seating areas like the rock shown um, or benches and picnic tables and the like um, just for gathering and for seating for observing the, the kids in the spray park. And so of the things that I showed uh, programming wise for the pools, uh, what would you like to see offered at Dodge? We're gonna have a poll. And again, you may have to scroll down to see all of the options. Another few seconds. Okay. So it looks like dive in movies is popular at Dodge. Um, and then a little bit of everything paddleboard yoga, aqua bikes, scuba lessons, health and wellness programming, water aerobics, and early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim hours. There was a little bit of everything there. And then what amenities would you like to see offered at Blackburn? We'll have a poll, you may have to scroll down. Another couple of seconds. Okay, so inclusive play, rain showers, and shaded structures and seating were the top votes there. Uh, dumping buckets and natural elements also got a vote. So thank you for that. And so as we're talking about improving these facilities, um, how should Columbus Recreation and Parks financially support the new amenities and programming? Um, and for reference, we've included there uh, the average of the 12 other municipalities with public pools in Franklin County. And so the average for daily adult admission there was just over $10. We have a poll free with some options. I believe you can select three. Another couple seconds. So it looks like um, adding additional annual membership opportunities was the top vote, uh, followed by fundraising opportunities, uh, raising entry price slightly, and raising the price of the annual pool pass. Um, and then in third place was additional charge for an early entry and partnership opportunities for businesses. Well, we had planned to have breakout room, um, but as we only have a few uh, members of the public here, I think we can just keep it all together in one room if that's okay with everybody. And so um, what we're looking at uh, learning from you is 
what improvements would you like to see at each of the sites? Uh, what aquatic activities or classes would you like to see? And I think that would mostly pertain to Dodge. Uh, what aquatic amenities would you like to see? And that could be for all of the sites. Uh, we would like to hear your thoughts on the safety and security improvements that we could that we could do. And then also uh, with these improvements, would you be willing to pay higher fees for upgraded pools? So I'll just leave this up and we'll just skip the breakout room. Does anyone want to start with their thoughts? Should we start with um, should we start with Dodge? I'm not sure what room um, you signed up for, those that are here, um, but I'm happy to start with either one. Uh, someone on the chat said um, something about bicentennial, so maybe we can talk about that. Sure. Yeah, that that was that was mine. So I, I was just hoping, like. Um, you know, we used to be able to, you know, there used to be landscaping, they, the restrooms used to be open and the park would be open. And I was just wondering, even getting back to what we used to have and having the programming would be really helpful. And I was just wondering um, where that was in the plan. Um, Cause I mean, I think having those things and not having porta potties would be fantastic. Yes, thank you. Um, currently Bicentennial is being studied. It's not going to open this year as they complete the study um, and looking at uh, repairing, maintenance, um, and that sort of thing to get it ready to go for next season. Um, but with the, uh, the amount of people that go to Bicentennial, um, it just really wasn't feasible to open this year with COVID. Um, and so the city's going to take this time to improve and do maintenance and get it ready to go for next year. Um, but I appreciate your comments about the restrooms and the landscaping, and we'll definitely make note of that um, as we look at what improvements we're going to make. Does anyone else have thoughts about Bicentennial? And how do you feel about the safety and security there? So, so I'll talk again. Um, again, I think the sooner we could get some sort of family programming here and, and even if it's this year um, would be fantastic. I think the fact that there's nothing here makes it worse and it makes it harder um, from a security standpoint. And again, um, you know, also potentially pretend, preventing the scooters from being able to scoot all over the park might be another way to keep that park safer. Um, I think that those are some of the options you can do down here to make it safer and more family friendly um, from that perspective. Can you expand on uh, the family programming? Like, you know, you used to have concerts here. Um, you know, Santa used to come in the winter. I mean, um, I think being able to expand that because you know, unlike your survey that you were kind of showing some answers, I mean, people don't come here, drive five minutes to come here. You know, this becomes, this has been a, was a destination. Mm -hmm. And I think the more things that you can do to bring families here, then other, you know, teenagers aren't going to come congregate here. And, um, and, you know, when there's an empty stage and there's no, nothing going on that causes DJs to come and do an impromptu concert. So I think the more things we do to, you know, whether it's rhythm on the ri river, um, um, you know, having maybe Catco come do some theater in the park, all of those things, I think, bring um, the community down here and then really get to show off what a wonderful um, destination this is. Is that what you were looking for expansion on? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were talking specifically aquatic related or concerts and that sort of thing, but that's good information. No, I mean, and again, like you can have fitness classes down here. I mean, there's a lot of things to do and it's just, um, 
it's, it, you know, knowing that the CDC has released the outdoor guidelines for kids and not being able to have it down here and knowing that there's still folks trying to enjoy it and you guys have the restroom shut down. It's, it's been, it's, it's, it's challenging down here. And sure. may, may I add to that? Sure. Um, my name is James Miller and, and I'm with Recreation and Parks. We are under a tremendous amount of pressure um, to do all of the things that you just suggested. Um, and it, the funny thing about that is, is it, it's self-induced pressure. We are, um, we are working so hard to get programming down there. Winterfest looks like it's gonna be a go. Um, the police department and safety, they are speeding up their time to review permits for alcohol sales and things like that. Like when we do a rib fest or a, or a food truck festival, things of such. Concerts are slowly starting to get booked for this summer and fall. And um, the bathrooms, the, the bathrooms for us have been a security concern because unfortunately lots of awful things have happened in those buildings. However, we are also working on a proactive program to address that issue as well so that they can get open. Um, I saw another um, thing in the chat window here about skateboarders, scooters, and rollerbladers and all of that stuff. That will always be a challenge, um, especially in that park. Um, but in years past, we've, we've had people there whenever the park is open and they try to keep their eye on stuff like that. And that's our hope and goal for the future. Right now, however, as we're coming out of the COVID crisis and gearing things back up again, um, just know that we're aware of all of those challenges. We're aware of all the desires and we're working very hard to address them. Thank you. Did anyone else have comments on Bicentennial or any of the downtown fountain? Okay, should we move um, to Dodge? I saw Kyle had a couple things in the chat. Yeah, because uh because I know Dodge has the outdoor pool, but hope we can find a way to build the indoor pool because, uh, and even the, just this past uh, season, the Jefferson Country Club put a dome dome for the fall to sp spring for, for the outdoor pool. I don't know if the, because they had to buy very expensive material that won't, uh, the, for the dome that, won't puncture and and stuff and uh, and keep people uh, warm in inside the uh, pool the because they could put um, dome uh, some type of temporary d dome for fall through sp spring and but the, there's companies that make the make the Portable do dome areas, but uh, but for Dodge, uh, this I've never swam in Dodge, but I would love to check that out outdoors. But we could still use indoor pools, and uh, and I do have the if you anybody see this, the competition pools we've been doing 25 yard, six 25 yard lanes pools, but but newer pools have been doing 25 yard by 25 meter pulls 11 25 yard lanes 10 25 meter lanes and uh, and then the McCorkle still has the 50 meter uh pull that can be converted into two 25 yard pulls and one or one uh one 25 yard pull and one 25 meter pull or both 25 meter pulls if people can see this uh uh because I printed it off over a year ago and 
and I'm willing to sh share it in the future. I mean, if I find the link on the on online. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Do you have any thoughts, Kyle, or anyone about safety and security at Dodge? No. Are there any records of uh, security issues at Dodge? Um, I would have to defer to Recreation and Parks on that. I'm not sure. Yes, there have been some, uh, as a matter of fact. The security cameras out there are, are working. Um, the security issues that we've encountered have not required police to be called. Um, so things happen, but they're not severe and they're often handled by, uh, city staff as far as I'm aware. So it would be minor. If the yes. staff uh, the other question I had is, uh, you mentioned something about, uh, the bathrooms at the one park, what issues happening in the bathroom. I'm curious what those issues were. Um, Drug use for the most part. Um, oh. We, I don't, there have not been any recent occurrences of molestations, but that is something that we are always very concerned about and we wanna make sure that that never happens. Um, but right now drug use is, is predominantly the biggest problem in the, in the bathrooms. There's no attendant in the bathroom all the time? In the bathroom, no. There's uh, often a security camera that shows people going in and coming out. You know, there's also privacy issues when, when you, um, you know, start talking yeah. about bathrooms. Uh, yeah. Well, as in, you consider bathroom and locker room and one and the same, I mean. Uh, well, now when you're talking about a bathroom like out at Bicentennial Park, where it's a building that kind of just stands off by its own, where people go in and come out for the sole purpose of using a bathroom, you know, only one person can go in there at a time. Um, or, you know, um, uh, like a, a mother and a child can go in there at one time. Um, when you when you talk about locker rooms, like, you know, Dodge Pool, you have a bunch of people in there. So it's a, it's a different environment altogether. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Any other thoughts on Dodge? I've only been to Dodge a few times, uh, so it's hard for me to speak about much about Dodge. Which site were you interested in talking about today? Or were you just uh, here to listen? Yeah, I'm mainly just to listen. I, I live close to the Windsor and, uh, you know, working wise, I don't have much time to, uh, they get to the pool during the hour. So I, I usually just go, go to Windsor on my way home from work. So, but I'm interested in all the aquatic, you know, what any type of input I could have to help, help out improve this situation. Sure, thanks for coming. Do we want to yep. talk about, go ahead. Uh, I was just curious. Is there any type of partnership with uh, like Columbus or other schools to uh, uh, have uh, swimming lessons as a uh, part of their curriculum? 
that actually came up in our last meeting, uh, the Glenwood and Windsor meeting. Um, so the Columbus City Schools are currently working on their own master plan, uh, which is a facility master plan, but it includes um, input on curriculum. And we're trying to find um, some commonalities there uh, since, since uh, Recreation and Parks is undergoing this process at the same time they are, uh, to see if there's any overlap there in ways that could be um, useful. Um, because the, none of the Columbus City Schools have pools, and so uh, we're looking at all options. Yeah, I think that would be a great way to promote you know, uh, swimming education. Mm -hmm. From my own personal experience, uh, I attended a school where they had swimming lessons, and I know many kids who never would have educated swimming lessons, you know, would learn to swim through school. And I, I just would think that would, I'd like to see Columbus schools be involved in something like that. Because many of my neighbors, again, went to Columbus schools and they don't know how to swim. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you. Thank you. How about I'm black with your ideas only. I, I love all the thoughts. I'm overwhelmed with all the ideas that you you have. So I'm I'm I commend you and your team. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take the input that we learned today and through the survey and through the rest of the meeting. Um, and we're going to come up with some different concepts for each of the sites. Um, and I mentioned at the beginning that we'll come back to you um, in a couple of months with those options. And we'll review them again and talk about what we've learned. Um, and then you'll get a chance to weigh in on those options. Um, and so I, I appreciate you being here. Um, does anyone want to talk about Blackburn? I think... Um, the three guests we have tonight have each spoken a little bit about Dodge and about um, the downtown fountains. Um, does anyone have comments on Blackburn? I've never been there. Um, are there any other comments or questions that we can talk about? Okay. Well, um, it was a quick one tonight. I thank you. I thank you all for being here. Um, we're going to post the presentation on the website. That's columbusaquatics.org, um, and it'll be in the chat if it's not already. Um, if you check back in a few days, we'll have the video from tonight posted, um, so you can watch again, share with your friends, um, check out anything maybe that you missed. Um, and then finally, uh, you can sign up for emails about the project uh, by clicking on this Gov Delivery link, which will also be in the chat. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys being here tonight. If you think of anything else uh, that you forgot to mention, you can email us at info at columbusaquatics.org. Um, we've received a few comments that way, and we're always looking for more input. Um, Kyle let us know that he has signed up for the next few meetings, but um, if you're interested in talking about some of the other sites, uh, next week we'll be talking about Barnett Spray Park, Driving Park Pool, and Maryland Pool. On Wednesday, June 30th, we're gonna talk about the Columbus Aquatic Center. On July 8th, which is a Thursday at 6 p.m., we'll talk about Lincoln Pool, Marion Franklin Pool, and Scioto Southland Spray Park. And then finally, on Thursday, July 15th, we'll talk about Tuttle Pool and Linden Spray Park. Um, and all of those start at 6 p.m. They'll all be on Zoom. Um, and you can sign up for all of those on the website at columbusaquatics.org. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.